Hi everyone, welcome to this video on time complexity, space complexity and in place solution. Whenever you are starting out with competitive programming, you might be able to give the solution to a problem. But it is also very important that you give time complexity and space complexity when you are giving a solution. Because you will definitely be asked that in an interview when you are giving solution to a problem. So let's start with time complexity. So think of time complexity as this particular statement. Time complexity is how the time taken by a program changes based on the input size, okay? And there are various ways in which you can express the time complexity and in this video we are going to look at the most popular one and the one that is most used in interviews that is the big O notation. So let's start right away with examples. As you can see I have written some piece of code here, okay? Basically I have an array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I am calling a function add numbers, okay? And this add numbers does nothing but simply adds all the numbers in the following array, right? We are running a loop from 0 to length of the array and then we are adding everything and returning the sum. So let's understand what will be the time complexity of this particular function. Now when you are thinking about time complexity, this is what you have to think. How many operations do I have to do in order to get the solution? If you want to add all the elements of an array, you will have to look at each and every element. That is, you'll have to add 1 to the sum, 2 to the sum, 3 to the sum and so on, right? You can't skip any element. That means, whatever was the input size, you had to iterate every part of the input, right? So then you can say that my input size was n, that is n is the length of the array and I had to go through each and every element. That means you had to do n operations, right, to get the solution. So in this case, you will say that the time complexity of your algorithm is O of n. That is, if your input size is n, then you need to do n operations in order to get the solution. It's alright if you didn't understand this particular example. We'll do multiple examples and by the end of this video, you will be able to say the time complexity of any given program to you. So for now, let's say that the time complexity of this is basically big O of n, okay? Now let's look at another example. Let's say you have to find the minimum of a given array, okay? So let's say you're given a constraint that the numbers are going to be from 0 to 99. So you'll say that your min is basically 100 and then you're going to iterate your entire array and you're going to check if the current element is less than min, then your new min is nums of i, right? And you're going to just return the min. Now, if you want to find minimum element of an array, you will have to check each and every element of the array, right? Because you don't know where the min is there. It could be the first element, it could also be the last element. So it is important that you check each and every element before you can decide the final min, right? That means you had to iterate the entire array. There was one for loop that you see, right? In one for loop, you could find the solution. So like the previous example, the time complexity here is O of n, right? because you had to do n operations to find the solution. Now let's say that I tell you that the min is definitely present in the first half of the array. That means I'm telling you that you don't need to check the second half, but for sure the min is in the first half. So basically you will run your for loop only for half the input, right? Not the entire input. So in this case, you're saying that you are basically having to do n by two operations, right? So you'll have to iterate n by two of the input to get the final solution. So you'll say that your time complexity is big O of n by 2, right? This is what you'll say. But here is the thing about big O time complexity. That is, you have to always ignore the constants. What do we mean by that? How do we ignore the constant? If your time complexity is in the following form, that is a n plus b, where a is a constant and b is a constant and n is your input, then you can simply say that this is equivalent to nothing but n. So big O of a n plus b is nothing but big O of n because you are going to ignore the constant. Here this by 2 is a constant, right? 1 by 2 is a constant. So you will say that your final time complexity is O of n only even though you have to look at only half the input, right? So your time complexity is O of n. So let's move on to the next example. What if I tell you that the minimum element is always the first element, right? So I'm telling you already that the minimum is first element. What are you going to do in this case? You're simply going to just say return nums of zero, right? Because I have already told you that it is the first element. We don't need to look at each and every element. We only can return directly the first element. So how many operations did you have to do in order to get the solution? Only one operation, right? So in this case, your time complexity is going to be O of one. Now let's say I tell you that I need you to return the minimum element and also the maximum element in a sorted array. What will you say? The minimum element is obviously a of 0. The maximum element is obviously a of n. So in this case, you will say that I had to do two operations. So your time complexity is big O of 2. But whenever you are referring to constant, you have to actually change it back to 1. So O of 2 is like saying O of 1. O of 100 is like saying again O of 1. 
So whenever you're dealing with constants, you'll say that your final time complexity is big O of 1. That is, you're saying that it's constant. It does not vary with the input. Even if the array size was 1000 elements, it doesn't matter because you know that the minimum element is the first element and the maximum element is the last element, right? Focus on this. It is very important. You just try to notice this. Is the number of operations changing based on my input size? If it is not, then you can be sure that your time complexity is big O of 1. That is, you can say it is constant time. It does not matter how big or small your input is. You always have to do some fixed number of operation. It can be 2 operation, it can be 100 operation, but it, it is not going to change. If, so for now, we have understood big O of 1 and we have also understood big O of n. Now let's move on to big O of n square. How can we say that the time complexity of our algorithm is big O of n square? Now let's take this particular example. Let's say you have a function that does some operation and you're going to pass the input size to this, right? And inside of the function, you are basically running two for loops that are nested, okay? And both of them are running from 0 to n and the second group is also running from 0 to n. Now what will be the time complexity of such a given program? Now understand this thing guys, because they are nested, your, whenever your i is 0, your inner for loop will run from 0 to n. Then your i will get incremented, it will become 1 again for the value of i equal to 1. Your Again, the inner for loop will run from 0 to n. For 2, it will run from 0 to n, so on up to 99, right? Because i less than n, so till 99. So that means for every increment in the outer loop, your entire inner loop is running. So you can say that the time complexity of this is basically n into n. They are nested, right? So you are doing n into n operation. For, ex for example, let's say your n value was 5. So your outer loop will run 5 times and every time it runs, your inner loop is running. That means you're running the entire thing 5 into 5 times, right? So that is 25 times. So you can say that when two for loops are nested, their time complexities get multiplied, okay? This is very important. So I can say that the time complexity of this particular thing is O of n into n, right? So that is nothing but O of n square. What if I had one more nested for loop that was also running from 0 to n? So if there are three nested for loop, obviously all the three complexities will get multiplied, right? So it will become n into n into n, that is n cube and so on. So as many nested for loops you have, those time complexities are going to get multiplied. Now there is one important thing to note here. Let's say my first for loop is running from 0 to n. In the second for loop, it says that it does not matter what the input size is. It is always going to run 10 times, okay? That means my second for loop does not care about the input size and it always runs 10 times, okay? What will I say in that case? I told you, right, the time complexities will get multiplied. That means the time complexity for this one will be n into 10, right? So 10n. So the time complexity for this is 10n. But what did we discuss before that constants are ignored? So if the time complexity is 10n, it is nothing but O of n, right? So just because you're having two for loop does not mean that you will say that the time complexity is O of n square, right? If they are nested, it just means that their time complexities will get multiplied. So you need to multiply and then ignore the constant. So if you're having two for loop, you multiplied, it became n into 10. 10 should be ignored, therefore it became O of n, right? So in the same way, you can calculate time complexity of n, n square, n cube, and so on. So remember, whenever your for loops are nested, you need to multiply the time complexities. Now what if I move this for loop out of here? This time the for loops are not nested but they are next to each other, right? They are placed next to each other. That means they are independent. First the first for loop will run. Once that is done executing then the second for loop will run. Now what did we decide when we have one for loop? That means it is running from 0 to n. Therefore the time complexity of this is O of n. Again I am running another for loop whose time complexity is also O of n. So when they are next to each other they are independent. That means their time complexities will be added. So in this case, I can say that the time complexity of this function is nothing but O of n plus n, right? So n plus n is the time complexity. And what is n plus n? It is nothing but 2n. Again, we have to ignore the constant, so it will become O of n. O of 2n will become O of n because we had to ignore the constant. So remember this, when they are nested, you need to multiply the time complexities. And when they are next to each other, you need to add their time complexities. Now similarly, how we did in the last function, Let's say that I will change this to 10. It is a constant value and it does not depend on the input size, okay? What will be the time complexity of this? It will be nothing but O of n plus O of 10, right? So O of n plus 10. Now plus 10, I told you that we need to ignore. So that means the time complexity overall will be nothing but O of n. Now let me give you another example and I want you to guess what will be the output. So basically we have a function and the input value is 100. So we are receiving it as n. And I'm going to run my loop 
200 okay so this for loop runs from 0 to 99 right so 100 times this for loop is running and i want you to tell the time complexity of this particular function what will it be is it going to be o of n no right the for loop is running only 100 times so the time complexity will be o of 100 and what did i tell when we are talking about constant we have to say that it is o of 1 that is you are saying it is a constant time operation so in this case the time complexity of the above function will be o of 1 because your program does not depend on the input size at all right you are simply running from 0 to 100 some or the other constant value now you will say these are very simple examples right we are dealing with only one kind of time complexity now what if your program is very complicated and it is doing different kind of task okay so let's say in this particular function what happens is there are two for loops that are running and beside that there is another for loop that is running okay so these two are nested both are running from 0 to n 0 to n and the third for loop which is not nested is also running from 0 to n now what about such a complex program what how will you tell the time complexity of this particular program now let's analyze this first of all these two are nested so what will be the time complexity it will be multiplied so n into n so i can say that right now the time complexity is o of n square all right now the next thing is these two for loops the outer for loop and this for loop are next to each other right so that means they are independent so first you calculated the nested two for loop now you can forget about this because they are next to each other they are not nested okay now when we come to this for loop what is the time complexity it is just one for loop so it is o of n right so you can say that o of n square plus o of n now there is no constant in this n square is not a constant n is also not a constant both are depending on input size n is the input size here so how do you tell the time complexity of this particular complex task now remember guys the function that is more rapidly increasing is the one that you have to consider is n square bigger or n let's say we'll take 10 is 10 bigger or 10 square obviously 10 square is bigger right so when these multiple time complexities are added you have to take the one that is going to give a bigger result okay because majorly how long your algorithm will run will depend on what is the most complex operation or what is the most time taking process obviously these nested two for loops are taking more time compared to this one single for loop right so after you write everything whatever is the time complexity and they are getting added you have to take that time complexity which is most rapidly increasing so here you will say that the time complexity is nothing but o of n square because o of n square plus n is going to equate to o of n square so now we have understood how to tell time complexity based on n square n n cube so on right and we are also able to tell if there are multiple how to tell the time complexity but what about log n you know it is very hard to tell whether the time complexity of a given algorithm is log n how do you say that now guys we are going to take a very simple example try to understand this and it will be very easy for you to tell whether the time complexity of an algorithm is logarithmic now the trick to tell whether the complexity of, of your algorithm is based on log is this when you are given a particular input you have to see whether you are traversing your entire input or you are always ignoring one half of the input that is very important okay so let's say in a binary search what happens you first find the mid element so in this case it will be 5 and then if the element to find let's say the element to find is 2 in this case okay so if the element to find is less than the given input then you all together ignore the second half right because it makes sense right if you are searching for a value of 2 and you know that this is a sorted array everything that comes after 5 is going to be greater than 5 that means we can't find the value 2 in the second half so we have to find the value only in the first half right so you are saying that I'm going to ignore the second half okay now again you'll find the mid element which is going to be 3 in this case right so you all together ignored the 6 7 8 9 and now you came to 3 3 is the mid element from 1 2 3 4 5 so you came to 3 and again you're searching for 2 so you know that 2 is not greater than 3 so you'll ignore the second half right so you're going to ignore this side and you're going to say that the value is actually present in the first half right and then finally you'll come to 2 and you're able to find 2 so what is the pattern that you observed you observed that when you're trying to find a solution in binary search you're always ignoring one half of the input and you're only considering the second half that means you're actually not going through the entire array you're only going through half the array iteratively first you went to 5 then you went to 3 and then you came to 2 right so when you notice a case like that the time complexity of your algorithm is nothing but log n now what about the base yeah i can say that the time complexity of binary search is log n because you're always ignoring one half but guys this is a very important trick to understand here when you're ignoring one half that is you're dividing your input into two halves then you have to say that your time complexity is log n to the base 2 the base is also very important when it comes to logs okay but let's say for some algorithm you're saying that you're going to divide your entire input into three halves 
and you are only going to look at one half and you are going to ignore the other two halves in that case since you divided your input into three halves so one two three four five six and seven eight nine and you're you're only going to iterate one half then you're going to say the time complexity is o of log n to the base three okay so the base is decided on how many parts you're dividing and it's important that you're visiting only one half because only if you ignore the other half then only you're saying that you're only operating on one half of it now let's say that in a given program you have written three algorithms in just one program okay for a given input size of n which is 8 okay let's say that the input size is 8 you have written a bubble sort algorithm if you don't know what bubble sort is it is basically a sorting algorithm and in which there are two nested for loops so two nested for loop means the time complexity is n square okay so what is value of 8 square it is basically 64 okay in the same program you have also written binary search and just like how we discussed right now the time complexity of binary search is log n because you only look at one half of the input and what is the value of log 8 to the base 2 it is basically 3 if you don't know how to calculate log you can just google it it is very simple to calculate and the last thing is you're trying to find the minimum element in a given array so to find minimum you just need one for loop so the, in that case the time complexity is o of n that means 8 now which is the least so you have to tell what is the time complexity of your entire program in which you are doing three different tasks and you are told to give the big o time complexity of your algorithm what will be the time complexity i told you right so it will be n square plus log n plus n and when you are adding the time complexity you have to see the one which is most rapidly increasing which is the one which is most rapidly increasing it is n square right the value is 64 and the one that is least rapidly increasing is your log n which is just 3 in this case so the overall time complexity of your program is nothing but n square you will be ignoring log n as well as n so from whatever we discussed so far we can say that first the least one is o of 1 that is constant time right in this case you have nothing to do just one operation and then what is bigger than that it is o of log n bigger is n n square n cube and so on so if you are having multiple time complexities you can remember this particular statement and you can tell the time complexity based on this so if we had everything then it would be n cube and if we didn't have n cube it would be n square and so on now guys if you understood this time complexity space complexity is very similar to this so if you have understood this then you have nothing to worry about in case of space complexity so the way you tell your space complexity is as such for example i tell you that you are given an input right this is your input and you have to return the square of every element in this particular input so let's say you're going to create another array okay so i'm going to name it square and equal to empty array and then you're going to basically have a for loop and you're going to do one square two square three square and so on and you're going to store everything in your square array and you're going to return this so what does that mean you used some extra space and how much extra space extra space of n elements right so square will also have n elements by the end of your algorithm so then you'll say that the space complexity of your algorithm is o of n because you used extra space to store the squares of the number and since there were n numbers you had to store square of n numbers so in that case your space complexity is o of n but let's say you will say that i don't want to keep a separate array i will change the original array itself and i'll make this elements to square of them right so you'll simply run a for loop and you'll say that a of i is equal to a of i into a of i right so you're not requiring any extra space so in that case you will say that your time complexity is constant you did not use any extra space so when you don't use extra space you'll simply say that time complexity is o of 1 that means you did not use any additional space and here is also where the in place solution comes into picture when you alter your input right to get the output you say that your solution is in place that is you did not create another space to find your solution but you altered the given input to you so your input was one two three four and it will become one four nine you're finding the square right so when you alter the input itself to find the answer you say that your solution is in place so guys as a conclusion remember this if you have understood time complexity you know that how to calculate the time complexity of your program the same logic you have to apply for calculating space complexity also okay so how much extra space are you using based on your input so let's say you say that i'm going to use n by two extra space if my given element is 10 element i need to store space for phi element for some reason so you will say that the space complexity is o of n by 2 but again you have to ignore constant here and your space complexity will be o of n you don't need to worry about very complicated space complexities because most of the time your space complexity will be o of 1 or o of n let me know in the comment section below if you want me to make a video on when the space complexity can also get very complicated if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for the upcoming videos see you in